shot and beautiful. Wiseman. It's time for high school sports right here on your home for local sports, the NCW Life Channel. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Biosports Physical Therapy, Charter College, Confluence Health, Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, Global Car Care, Harvest Valley Pest Control, Les Schwab, One Way Construction, Rivercom 911, Save Mart, and Sankster Motors. And now let's get ready for high school sports. It starts now on your local TV station, the NCW Life Channel. A shot into the bar. Go, 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 go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to East Wenatchee, Washington, site of today's encounter between the Eastmont Wildcats and the Moses Lake Chiefs. Hi again, I'm Sebastian Moraga. Alongside me today is our soccer expert, co Coach Neil Oyston. And Coach, this should be a very interesting contest. On one hand, we have Eastmont, who had a very tough loss against Wenatchee after leading 2-1 in at halftime. They lost 3-2, but they've come back strong. They've won three games in a row. They want to make it four. And on the other hand, we have Moses Lake, a team that wants to be in the upper echelon. Some people perhaps sh say should be in the upper echelon of the Big Nine, but somehow still hovers above, above around 500. They want to make that move. They want to get over the hump. Maybe this is the opportunity for them to do it. It should be a very interesting contest. Yeah, very much so. I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to today's game. And, and you said it there, you know, Eastman, um, you know, suffered a tough loss. Um, you know, obviously in, in a game where, whereby I felt like they should have won the game. I thought they played really get really well against Wenatchee. Um, and you said it, you know, how do you come back from a loss like that? You know, sometimes that can make or break a season. Um, they could have gone the other way. They could have let that loss affect them. But they've gone on three in the bounce. Um, they've shown really great spirit. Um, they've had a good reaction to that loss. And they've got to keep going now. They've got to keep going forward. And, and this could be a difficult game for them today. Like you said, Moses, like they're going to come here. They're going to make it difficult. They might sit in a little bit. The first goal is going to be crucial, really crucial. If Eastmont get it, um, then it should be a, a pretty easy to, easy game for them. If not, the more confidence Moses like are going to get. So um, it should be an exciting game, but really intrigued to see how it's going to go. That's the kind of game we saw against Wenatchee. Moses Lake held tight, held back, played the counterattack, got two goals in there, got a little bit of confidence. Of course, the second half, a completely different story, but they made it tough on Wenatchee on the road uh, in the first half. We might see that some of that today. Absolutely, and it's like mentality and, mm -hmm. and making sure that Eastmont stay patient. You know, on paper, okay, you know, great players, you know, good team, they're expected to win. However, if it doesn't go according to plan in the first half, you know, they can get a bit cagey. They've got to stay patient. Moses Lake, that's what they've got to do. You know, they did it to Wenatchee. They sat in. They were patient. They're probably just going to do the same here tonight. Can Eastmont break them down? And like I said, get the first goal, all right, and then it's a little bit more comfortable. If they don't, Moses Lake are going to grow in confidence. They might snatch a goal. They might go on ahead. And then it's up to Eastmont. How are they going to react? Are they going to stay disciplined in their approach and, and hopefully come out victors? But again, it should be an exciting prospect. Oh, of yep. course. Lots to see. Lots up ahead, including an interview with the coach for Eastmont, the coach for the Chiefs, the keys to the game, the starting lineups. A lot more coming your way here on NCW Live Channel. Don't go away. News, weather, and sports. It's all here weekdays at 5, 6, and 10 on your local news source, the NCW Life Channel. Hi, folks. Welcome to Save Mart. How can we help you today? Uh, we're looking for a recliner. Okay, right this way. Go ahead and move this chair on the other side. Great. I want that one. I like that one. That's a great choice. And I want this one as well. Okay. And I definitely want this one. Ooh. You find it at Save Mart. Full service at a low, low price. Welcome back to Eastmon High School, where we're just about ready to witness the clash between the Chiefs of Moses Lake and the Wildcats of Eastmont. Next to us is the head coach of the Chiefs, Derek Gonzalez. Coach, welcome. And uh, but, well, what comes to mind when you look at Moses Lake and its history uh, and, and, the, and the pool of talent, 
uh, you, sometimes you wonder, okay, what what needs to happen for Moses Lake to be in that upper echelon of the of the Big Nine? Uh, right now, you guys are right about at 500 there. You gave Wenatchee some serious trouble. We expect you to do the same here against Eastmont. What needs to happen for this uh, team to put 80 good minutes together and really get over that hump? Uh, I think it comes down to the boys putting together um, a number of different uh, tactical things that, that um, they have, they've, they've been doing but haven't perfected. So uh, once they commit themselves to, to consistently uh, meeting those, the, those, tactical, uh, those specific tactical strategies um, and how they want to play, and then, and then on top of that playing for each other, uh, things, things tend to come together for us. So hoping that happens, yeah. Thank you, Coach. Coach Neil. Yeah, I'd just like to ask you about your approach today. Um, obviously, against Wenatchee, uh, played a very good game. You made it hard for Wenatchee. You kind of sat in a little bit, played on the counter. Is that something that you're going to take today against Eastman? Uh, you know, the counter, uh, counter, and uh, heavy defense is always, you know, part of the, the plan when playing good teams. Uh, but I think that there are some some major um, uh, tactical shifts uh, that that that'll occur today um, to account for um, specific uh, assets that that Eastman has. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Thank you very much, Coach. That was Derek Gonzalez, the head coach of the Moses Lake Chiefs, playing the Eastmont Wildcats here are right behind us in just a little bit. When we come back, we have the keys to the game, an interview with Vidal Hurtado and a whole lot more here on NCW Live Channel. Don't go away. The new Hummer EV is everything you want in an all-electric vehicle. It's powerful, reliable, comfortable, and will take you anywhere you want to go, on road or off. Why buy one of those lesser EVs when you can have one that uses them for traction? Order your Hummer pickup or SUV today from Sangster Motors, batteries included. 911, what is the address of your emergency? Yes, it's me, it's my husband. I think he's had it. There's something the matter with him. It was a feeling that I'll never forget, like being able to meet them and know that he survived. Okay, tell me what's happening. Is he conscious? No, he's not. He's okay. not. Okay, take a deep breath for me. I'm getting you help. River Calm means to me that I still have my husband here with me. They're the ones that guided me through saving his life. Welcome back to Eastmont High School. We're just about ready to start this contest between Moses Lake and Eastmont. But first, we have a quick little get together here with the head coach of the Eastmont Wildcats, Vidal Hurtado. Coach, as always, welcome. Pleasure to have you here. And uh, we were talking in the pregame how tough of a loss that was against Winanchi, but we are also uh, marveling at how your team has responded. Three wins in a row, decisive, no cheapies. To what do you attribute that maturity from these young men? I just think they looked at the game. Uh, we watched the game, and the scoreline wasn't in our favor, but the way we played for 65 minutes was really good soccer, in my opinion, especially the first half. Um, in that game, we had a chance to put it to lead 3-1. We didn't convert the opportunity, and we kind of got caught on our heels. But they came out knowing that they played well enough to win. They didn't get the win. And so we just got ready for the next game. And they, they responded well. They're just enjoying each other's company. They're working hard at trainings, and uh, that's what I attribute it to. It's just they want to be out there and playing, and win or lose, we just show up every time as best as we can. Thank you. Coach? Yeah, just to kind of echo that, t talk to me about the dressing room after the Wenatchee game, because I agree. I think the boys played exceptionally well in that game, and I think we're very unlucky to lose that. What has inspired them to kind of go on a three-win bounce since then? And what type of mental qualities have they shown after that result? Well, I don't, I don't talk about the game right after it. I let it, let them, we, we process it for, for the day, and then on our on our film day, we, we just talked about how we created opportunities, we played well, and you know we've won games that we didn't necessarily deserve. Um, we've lost games that we deserved. That's just how soccer goes. And um, their, their mentality, is, to me, is just they just want to come out and play and, and give their best. Um, we talk about mental performance. 
I think that has helped a little bit locking into the where you're at right now, the task at hand. That has helped tremendously. But uh, it's just, uh, you know, it's just that they want to be around each other. They've been playing with each other for a long time, and you know, part of our process is just learning uh, to learn from our loss. I think that's uh, there's there's growth in the loss, and I think um, as coaches we were able to uh, help them understand that that you, you you will only know how strong you are until uh, you. you you have adversity or a challenge, and in our case, that was that loss. I know it means a lot to them, uh, but they just understood that it's part of the process and it helps us be better. Awesome, thank you. All right, thank you very much, Coach, and uh, uh, I want to apologize publicly to you for interrupting your team talk last time I worked against Wenatchee. That will not happen again. That was Vidal Hurtado, the head coach of the Eastman Wildcats. When we come back, the starting lineups, the keys to the game, and a whole lot more. Don't go away. Slush Shop Tires, I'm a confident backseat driver. Shopping cart, because Les Schwab helps keep us safe with brakes, steering, and more. Eyes ahead, Dad! Now with those guys back there offering with their tires, toilet paper. But Les Schwab gives the safety by the car load. Turn here. We're kind of a big deal here. Les Schwab Tires, celebrating 70 years of doing the right thing. Welcome back to Eastmont High School, where we're just about ready to watch the Moses Lake Chiefs and the Eastmont Wildcats go right at each other here in this chilly mid-spring evening of soccer in the Wenatchee Valley. Really quick, let's go to the starters. First, the visiting Moses Lake Chiefs, number zero. These are in numerical, not positional order. Number zero, goalkeeper Sam Revuelta Sanchez. Number two, Daniel Ramirez. Number five, Adrian Morales. Number seven, Reynaldo Rodriguez. Number eight, Jackson Taylor Mose. Number 10, Alex Landa. Number 11, Oscar Garcia. Number 13, Willie Sochirka. Number 14, Osvaldo Santana. Number 15, Miguel Mendoza. And number 19, Jonathan Cuevas. The head coach for the Moses Lake Chiefs is Derek Gonzalez. The assistants, Custodio Valencia, Miguel Segura, Henry Garcia, Edgar Nava, and Mr. Rolando Gonzalez. Now, the starters for the hosts, the Eastmont Wildcats. Once again, these are in numerical, not positional order. Armando Mendoza, number one, goalkeeper. Number two, Kay Pefferman. Number five, Orlando Maldonado. Number six, Osvaldo Sanchez. Number eight, Angel Sitio. Number nine, Tyrell Malcolm. Number 10, Cristian Maldonado, El Vaquero, the Cowboy. Number 12, Juan Vargas. Number 13, Edgar Leon. Number 15, Luis Romero. And number 17, Jesus Villa. Now, coach, seeing Tyrell Malcolm Reminds me, wasn't it a game that you and I did also when Tyrell Malcolm came off the bench and scored those two goals for Eastmont to give him the victory? That's correct. Must be a thrill and a half to, for you to see him now a starter for this very same squad a year later or yeah. a year or so later. Well, and I think we talked about during that, that game, the you know, he was, he was sitting on the bench. Yeah. You know, maybe it could have affected that game. He came on and he scored two, two goals. I mean, look, the, the boy has quality. I mean, you know, you look at the size of him. He's powerful. He's fast. You know, and, he, and he's one of the best finishers that I've, I've ever worked with. So, you know, I love watching him, watching him play and, you know, put the ball in the back of the net. And, maybe he'll do that again today all right uh, you mentioned uh, early on that uh, the, the patience for, of, could pay dividends for Moses Lake what are some of the other keys to the game for just not just for Moses Lake but for 
the uh, folks at home here, the, uh, the, uh, the Eastmont Wildcats? Yeah, I'm really interested to see Eastmont's approach. Um, are they going to come out of the blocks early? Are they going to be on the front foot? And like I said, I think in this game, uh, the first goal is going to be really crucial. Um, if Moses Lake, I think they can just kind of sit back a little bit and hit on the counter like they did against Wenatchee. They might have, a, might have a chance in this game. All right, we're going to take a quick break for the national anthem. We'll be right back after this. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. Come on, I'm a certified technician. I was trained to take good care of you. Nine, I've only been to the dealer. I've been coming here for years. These guys are great. Look around. The BMW, the Jag, the Volvo, they're all waiting for regular service. Well, the BMW has a little computer issue, but that's nothing we can't handle. Come on in. From regular maintenance to computer troubleshooting, trust the Global Car Care technicians with your import, diesel-powered, or domestic vehicle. Global Car Care, they speak your car's language. Danke schön. Welcome back to Eastmont High School, and let's uh, pick up where we left off, the keys to the game. Coach Austin. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, like I said, I think the, the first goal is going to be crucial in this game. I think the approach of Eastmont is going to be interesting to see. Um, are they going to push high up the field? Are they going to press Moses Lake early? Um, are they going to play direct? Um, as the game goes on and there's no score, you know, that's when I think Moses Lake are going to probably get some confidence within the game. Um, they may take a similar approach as they did against Wenatchee. You know, are they going to be compact? Are they going to make sure that they stop chances going in from wide areas and then maybe hit um, the break in behind? So it really is an interesting game that we have today. Um, definitely a tactical approach from, from each team um, is going to be interesting to see. But yeah, I think it's on Eastmont to really start strongly to dictate the tempo of the game. And if they do that, then they've probably got enough quality here to, to win the game. Absolutely. We're just about ready to begin. As the old senator used to say, this is about to start. Esto comienza, señores. The whistle is on, and we are in business here at Eastmont High School. Eastmont taking care of business from right to left in your screen, decked almost entirely in red. And Moses Lake doing their thing, decked almost entirely in white. The quick touch upfield by Villa. Villa looking to connect with Sanchez. Sanchez back to Villa. Rejected by the midfield of the Chiefs. Sochirka. So Chirka, he was easy to tell uh, against the Wenatchee game because he was wearing gloves. No gloves today, so good luck to us. Whistle on the play. Free kick for the Moses Lake team. Pivoting head of that time on defense by Romero. Looking to connect with Edgar Leon. First on it, however, is Taylor Mose. A little too long for Sanchez to scoop. And with more urgency than style there, Mr. Romero sending it to the throw. And we're just about uh, starting here. Just one trip around the clock. One minute and ten seconds into this first half of play. Eastmont and Moses Lake. Big nine action here on NCW Live Channel. Glad you could join us in this chilly mid-spring evening of soccer on the eastern shores of the mighty Colombia. The through ball that time, Edgar Leon, good connection with El Vaquero, Maldonado shot across, bounces off Jonathan Cueva, sails out of bounds. It will be a corner kick first of the game for either team. Yeah, I was going to say that I think Moses Lake started well. I thought they, uh, they put a bit of pressure on early. Um, but Eastmont won the ball there. It was a great diagonal run from Christian Vaquero. Edgar Leon form, uh, found him with a good pass. Um, let's see what they can do in the corner kick here. One, two, three, four, five. Well, it's easier to count the ones who are not in the box defending for Moses Lake and just the one player. So everybody defending except for one player for Moses Lake. And it works. So Chirka clearing it out. Recovered by... Eastmont, Pefferman, the shot into the box, trying to connect that time with Leon. Flag is up, none of that count. 
offside call. I think it was the right decision. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it was marginally offside, though. I think it was a good ball in from Kai Pfefferman. A little dink over the back there. Um, slightly mistimed his run. But, uh, yeah, early intention there for Miesmont to try and get in behind the uh, Moses Lake defense. And a bit of a different look to the gate defended by Moses Lake is Sam Revuelta Sanchez taking care of this goal kick. Last time we had Moses Lake uh, visit the Chelan Douglas County's area. It was uh, Mr. Guidi Pagliarulo who made a heck of an impression in the first half against Wenatchee. He did a he did a good job, but as it turns out, he was subbing for Sam Revuelta Sanchez who was injured at the time. So now is Mr. Revuelta Sanchez once again turn by under the three tubes, a free kick for Moses Lake being taken care of by Osvaldo Santana. The header a bit too high there for Rodriguez. Morales, Ramirez, nice m defensive maneuver by Orlando Maldonado. The long ball trying to find Christian Maldonado. Yeah, you, you're going to see that when Eastmont win the ball. They're gonna, they've got PC forwards up top with Tyrell and Christian Vaccaro. So you, you're going to see long straight diagonal balls there early to try and catch Moses Lake out of their compact shape. And for those of us who, who don't know, how would you describe a PC forward? You know, someone that when, when the midfield wins the ball, they're going to take off. Someone who's going to be, um, you know, really fast in behind, make intelligent runs. And they kind of thrive off those balls forwards. They want forwards, want balls into space. They don't want the ball at feet. They want it into space so they can run on to. You know, and in the case of Tyrell and, and Christian Vaccaro, they'll be looking for that tonight. Alex Landa, thank you very much for that definition, Coach. That, that does help a bunch. Whistle on the play. And it will be just a throw-in. I thought it would be more than that, but it's going to be just a throw-in for the Wildcats. Leon, Sanchez, taken back by Reynaldo Rodriguez, whistle on the play, foul called. Something the referee did not like about that marking effort by Eastmont. Yeah, he just kind of tried to open up there, lost the ball cheaply and tried to recover it and just a little bit of a shove in the back there. Um, again, dangerous position here. They're going to try and get the ball into the box, cause a few problems. There's a deep ball. Oh, almost connected with Sochirka. Cleared away by the back line of Eastmont. Trying again for Moses Lake was Taylor Mose, Jackson Taylor Mose. The recovery now down the uh, left side. The little heel touch, perhaps even not even that, just a screen there trying to fool a couple of markers. It does not fool Armando Mendoza who makes the stop. Rolls to his right and play continues now favoring the Wildcats. Vargas across midfield. Recovered by Taylor Mose, backing up a little bit for Ramirez. Ramirez looking up on the mark is Malcolm. The ball passes Ramirez and it bounces off the face of that Eastmont player. He seems to be doing okay. He seems to be doing okay. That was fortuitous, actually <laughs> quite unfortunate as a matter of fact, but he seems to be doing all right. Yeah, a little bit, a bit of sloppy play there from Eastmont with two or three passes in a row. They haven't connected. Um, just, you know, basics there. They're not showing that in the opening 10 minutes here. Romero. A couple of players waiting for it. There's Malcolm. We haven't seen much of him in the early going. Malcolm. Malcolm. Leon. Touch up field. Vargas. Sanchez. Vargas. Nice move, Vargas. Nice give and go, beautiful. Making a path as they go to the top of the box. Maldonado, Orlando, Pefferman. Sales pass one, the chipper. And uh, very, very tricky shot that time for the goalkeeper, Sam Revuelta Sanchez, who has to stick his arms out to make sure that the ball doesn't make it into the goal. Yeah, I'm not sure he meant it. I think he might have been looking for, for Tyrell in the middle, but it nearly worked. Almost went in the top corner there on his weaker foot as well, so unlucky. But that's better for Miesmont. You know, I think there was a good combination down there on the right-hand side. They've just got to pick their opportunities at the right time, um, connect two or three passes, and then the space will open up. 7.07 on the clock, still tied at nil-nil. Moses Lake and Eastmont. Want to say hello to uh, 
our folks uh, listening in Douglas County and Grand County, and of course, our folks listening in from Chelan County. It's pretty cool to see how the beautiful game is reaching a wider and wider swath of land thanks to broadcasts like these. Nice job by Malcolm. The good through ball that time, Maldonado. Cuevas on the mark, Maldonado into the box, looking for Malcolm to touch, and it sails a little awry. And you can see the, the body language of Malcolm, pure frustration that that ball could not believe that that ball sailed to the right instead of towards the goal. Yeah, it was a great play down the right hand side there from uh, Christian Ficaro, got in behind his uh, defender, pulled the ball back, and uh, unfortunate to connect there from Tyrell Malcolm. There's Maldonado once again, El Vaquero. Christian Maldonado, the shot across, looking for Malcolm. Sails a little too short. Kicked away by the back line of the Chiefs. Trying again is Jesus Villa. Villa further up for Vargas. On the mark is Garcia. Ball goes out of bounds. It will be a throw-in for the Chiefs. Yeah, I think you're going to see that a lot tonight. Um, you know, trying to get down to wide areas from Eastmont. Going kind to of get in behind the defense. And then the idea there is to try and pull the back for, for runners coming in from midfield. There's Pefferman. Trying to land a second header. Scooped away by Morales. So Chirica on the battle with Sanchez. Taken back by Eastmont. Down the flank on the left-hand side is Orlando Maldonado. Good ball that time into the box for Leon. The shot across and nobody there to sink it in. And the ball just uh, drifts away across the mouth of the goal like a tumbleweed across SR28. Yeah, good play again there, wasn't it? Yeah, good play uh, from the midfield. Nice ball in, into space and ball into the box there. Just wasn't able to find a red shirt. A bit of a uh, blender, a bit of a mixer there. Ball goes this way and that until it bounces off. Uh, looks like a Moses Lake defender, says the referee. And it will be a corner kick, second corner kick of the game. Both have favored the home team. Eastmont as we approach the 10 minute mark here at Eastmont High School kicked away by Garcia Vargas battling it out with a Moses Lake player Romero Mendoza Armando Mendoza Across midfield to the feet of the other Mendoza, Miguel Mendoza, the one that plays for Moses Lake. So Chirca. Landa. Rodriguez. Up the road for Sochirka. Another shot. 30 plus. And a little wide. 10 minutes, 32 seconds into this first half of play. This moment of the game brought to you by Biosports Physical Therapy. Find them online at biosports.net. Open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. We start to see at least one Eastman player warming up, or is he just fetching a ball? Yeah, I think he's going to be the ball boy for okay. the night. All right. So he's not necessarily warming up. He's just helping out. The stop by Revuelta Sanchez. Taylor Mose stopped by the back line of Eastmont. Leon off to the races is Malcolm. Malcolm racing with Santana. Malcolm, Malcolm, the Nabic, the shot, the stop, and a sweeping save that time by the goalkeeper Revuelta Sanchez. There's a whistle on the play. Something illicit in the charge by Malcolm, perhaps, uh, coach? Yeah, I think, um, again, good play. I think as he tried to uh, come inside in his right foot, I think it was a, a heavy touch. and. I think it was a 50-50 ball. Goalkeeper came out to uh, collect it. And, uh, you know, Malcolm had every right to kind of uh, go for the ball there. But in doing so, he's just clipped the goalkeeper and um, left a leg on him. But you're going to see that combination a lot, you know, with uh, Edgar Leone in the middle, just behind Malcolm. As soon as Leone gets the ball, you can see Malcolm already. He's taken off. He's looking for balls in behind. And looks like that's going to be a, an action for the Eastmont Wildcats tonight. So Chirka and... Leon battling it out. Ball goes out of bounds. The action will favor the Moses Lake squad. 
12 minutes 16 seconds into this one still tied on nil nil Jackson Taylor Mose and Daniel Ramirez. Ramirez trying to connect with Landa, the charge from behind, I believe, by Pefferman. Referee did not like that. Yeah, those ones are always tricky, you know, because it's a physical game, right? You're going to have to use your body now and again, and he's, he's kind of lent in there a little bit, kind of maybe guarded, it, guarded the ball, but referee seems to think it's enough for a free kick in a, dang in a dangerous position, you have to say. Jonathan Cuevas getting that left foot ready. Cuevas. The ball doesn't drift nearly as deep enough as he hoped. And the nimble stop by Armando Mendoza. Isman on the quick counter there. The through ball on the left side. And this could be interesting. He shot across. Oh. <laughs> My goodness. With a bit of trouble, the Moses Lake defense still manages to keep the range from catching on fire. Great play again, though. Edgar Leon kind of takes the space there. He get, gets his head up. He's looking for a run. And Vic uh, Christian Vaccaro there made a great diagonal run. Took a touch. And uh, I think one of their defenders tumbled over the goalkeeper. But I think the angle was very acute there. I think it was hard for Vaccaro to kind of get an attempt on goal. But better for Miesmann. The defensive head of that time by Adrian Morales. Off to the races now is Alex Landa trying to outrun Pefferman. They both hit the deck. Pefferman keeps running. The shot across bounces off. Let's see what the referee says. It says, he says, she says, corner kick. Yeah, if Moses Lake are going to get anything out of tonight, they're going to have to be good on these set pieces, free kicks, corner kicks. They're going to have to get better balls into the box than what they have on the last couple of occasions. 14.07 on the clock and it will be Mr. Alex Landa taking care of this delivery defensive header by Luis Romero and the shot from outside the box and the stop by Armando Mendoza Mendoza trying to find Osvaldo Maldonado taken back by Moses Lego give and go as they approach the box Daniel Ramirez into the box whistle on the play foul called as Pefferman hits the deck and now is Maldonado make that uh, no I stand corrected it's it's Daniel Ramirez Daniel Ramirez who's accusing a, uh, an upper thigh injury looks like but he's he's Toughing it out, walking it off. Referee checking with his assistant. And as we approach the first quarter hour of play, it's still nil-nil. And now the first uh, Moses Lake player begins warming up. Got some looks, like, looks like Nganga. Got some late sunshine here in uh, eastern Washington. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty neat when they went to fetch the ball for the corner kick. Uh, you could see the, their shadows. And their shadows were huge because the sun was hitting them just right then. It's about time. <laughs> Pefferman, Malcolm, Maldonado Osvaldo, the turn, past Cristian Maldonado, a little too far for Angel Sitio, recovered by Reynaldo Rodriguez, Reynaldo Rodriguez under some pressure, marked by three now, finally kicked away by Jesus Villa, taken back by Rodriguez, the ball down the flank for Garcia, Garcia battling with his marker, ball goes out of bounds. No, referee says play on, and play on we do. Rodriguez, Reinaldo. Taylor Mose. Daniel Ramirez. Seems to be doing okay. Taylor Mose, the shot. And Mr. Mendoza watches it sail past him. It good. will be a uh, big pardon. Go right ahead, yeah, please, coach. Good spell of possession there for, for Moses. Like they just possessed the ball in the mid mid pack there and switched the ball from left to right. And uh, but you know East Mountain are doing some good stuff defensively, restricting Moses like to shots from outside the box. This part of the game brought to you by Charter College. They work to get you to work. Find out about how to enroll today at chartercollege.edu. The header of that time by Sochirka. Moving the ball now is Adrián Morales being marked by Orlando Maldonado. Jackson, Jackson Tyler, Taylor Mose. Reynaldo Rodriguez. The touch up field, about downfield a little bit. Good triangulation, interrupted. Let's see if uh, Osvaldo Santana can keep this going. Sochirka. 
Ramirez. Malcolm putting some pressure, succeeding at it, taking the ball away, waiting for it is uh, Vaquero. Personal maneuver this time by uh, Malcolm. The ball got away from him a little bit. Charged from behind and a bit of an exchange of an opinions there between Malcolm and Osvaldo Santana. We don't need that here, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And it will be a corner kick for Isma, but uh, that mistake by Moses Lake almost costly for the Chiefs. But it came with good pressure, you know. It's part of the game where Tyrell Malcolm has improved over the years, you know. His work without the ball, and I think you can see from Eastmont there, the pressure in there. They're trying to show uh, Moses Lake on the inside, and it was their pressure, their organization there that kind of led to that mistake. Corner kick for the Wildcats. As we approach the 19th minute of play, we have the first substitution. It looks like Daniel Ramirez will take a seat. And it looks like one of them will be one of the subs coming in. Will be Peter Nganga. And the second one will tell you in a second because he's in a very big crowd right now. There's a the shot. Punched it away. Misses. The kick in that time by Sitio doesn't prosper. Trying again is Villa. Ball goes out of bounds. The second sub for Moses Lake in this contest. Looks like it's number 17, Juan Aguilar. We're going to uh, check on that at halftime because we were told that he was not playing today. There's Malcolm. So Chirka. Morales before Pefferman, now Pefferman before Morales. Nice move by Pefferman that time. Vargas. Leon. Good through ball. Orlando Maldonado into the box. One waiting inside. Well surrounded. However, oh my oh. goodness. And the ball bounces off the feet of Jackson Taylor Mose and gives Eastmond a 1 0 lead. That's soccer for you. Yeah, a great build up there. You know, it started off with uh, Pefferman's little nutmeg there, and I think uh, Bowen and Leon, and, you know, some fancy feet there to get away from his defender. What you have to say, what a great ball in behind. Great diagonal run there. Um, and that's what you've got to do. You've got to put the ball into the box and, and see what happens. And unfortunately for, for Moses Lake there, I think it's come off his shin as he's tried to uh, try to clear it maybe with the wrong leg, and it's ricocheted into the goal there. 1 0, Eastmont. Moses Lake starting the action anew. The stop at midfield, trying to connect with Reynaldo Rodriguez. Stopped by Romero. Trying again for Moses Lake is Mendoza, Miguel Mendoza. There's Jesus Villa. Ball goes out of bounds. You'd have to say the timing of that goal kind of goes against Moses Lake. Thought they were, you know, creeping into the game. They were growing in confidence there, trying to. You know, restrict Eastmont there, but, uh, you know, the hard work in the opening 20 minutes, uh, they're going to have to kind of show a reaction here themselves. Absolutely. Like uh, Coach uh, Hurtado said, we've won games that we didn't deserve to win. We've lost games that we didn't deserve to lose. Absolutely. There's Malcolm, a bit of a hand touch, I, I thought. I The referee agrees with us. And Malcolm has to be careful because his temper almost <laughs> got the best of him against uh, Wenatchee. Yeah, it's his personality, though, isn't he? He's a, he's a character, and sometimes you need that. Sometimes, as long as it doesn't go above board and, you know, resorts to him getting sent off the field, sometimes you need a bit of character on, on this soccer field. True. Absolutely, absolutely. There's Malcolm. Osvaldo Sanchez and Pefferman toying a little bit w with the touchline. Osvaldo Sanchez. Leon. Leon. Patrolling the area, the the region, I should say. The area is something else. Sanchez, taken back by Sochirka. Into no man's land. Push up field by the Wildcats. Malcolm trying to fool his marker. Another try. Leon. Enganga. Enganga. Sochirka, taken back by... 
Ismont. There's Maldonado. Of the pass by Leon. Back to Leon it goes. Approaching the top of the box. The good through ball. A little too short. Trying again. Orlando Maldonado. And this one sails wide. But it bounces off a Chiefs player. Mm -hmm. So it will be a corner kick for Eastmont. Yeah, you can see again in the middle of the field there. Some great uh, one-two touch passing. That's what Eastmont have got to do. You know, they've got to take the initiative and move the ball quickly. And, and then when that happens there, you know, the compact defense of Moses Lake. Space will open up and... Um, through balls will be will be on so and if they can keep doing that then more chances will be created it's partly cloudy skies still a touch of blue can be seen throughout but we are playing under artificial lights there is the corner kick sailing across the box cleared away trying again for Eastmont is Villa defensive header trying to clear things up for the Chiefs and a counter in the making this time off to the races we go Looks like Alex Landa. No, nope, it was Adrian Morales battling with Pifferman. And Pifferman will go chase it. It will be a throw in for the Wildcats. There's a throw in for Eastman. Orlando Maldonado. On the mark is Miguel Mendoza. Angel Sitio. Towards the center alley for Cristian Maldonado. Touch to the back for Sanchez. Opening the game way up. Now back to Sanchez. Bit of a chipper there. Oh, fancy touch that time. But Malcolm almost succeeded. Sanchez. Pfefferman. Leon. Touch to the back. Sitio. Pfefferman. Leon. Pfefferman. Malcolm, a bit of a shove there. Whistle on the play, absolutely. And now uh, Malcolm seems to come up a little lame there, which is, has to be a worrisome sight for the Eastman fandom. Yeah, it's always hard as a center forward when the ball goes into the feet. You know you've got your center back. Uh, when that ball goes into the feet and he's got his back to goal, that the center back's probably going to come through you a little bit and sometimes would rather take the foul than allow the player to go in behind. Sanchez, right-footed shot. Not a major problem for Sam Revuelta Sanchez. And the goal kick will favor Moses Lake. This moment of the game brought to you by Confluence Health. High quality care close to home. Confluence Health is dedicated to improving their patients' health with safe, high quality care in 12 communities. Jackson Mose. Romero and Sanchez. Sanchez. And Sitio, Sitio, and Vargas, Vargas, and Villa. Villa back to Sitio, and the touchline gets their first throw in for Moses Lake. This is NCW Live bringing you live soccer action from Eastmont High School. Tonight it's Eastmont and Moses Lake. Don't forget, April 22nd, Moses Lake at Wenatchee on a softball doubleheader you will not want to miss with Joel Norman storming. Joel Norman on the call. There's Malcolm putting up with some serious charges from behind. That should be worth a yellow card in my book, and apparently we're going to have one. No, just a talking to, it mm. looks like. Just to talking mm. to, although I see something in the referee's hand. No, no, no. no. I think just the talking to for Mr. Santana this time, but I guarantee you if that happens again, that will not be yeah, it's a the same situation. Tough call there. I think he did well to get away from him. It looks like he's come from behind and he's taking his legs. Normally that's a yellow card offense. One of those rare instances when the wall was too far. So the referee brings the wall up a couple of feet. And the free kick by Sanchez. The header by Malcolm sails wide and Mr. Revuelta Sanchez putting it in his arms. Whistle on the play. A bit of a talk there mm -hmm. going on between one of the assistant referees and the one of the Eastmont players. And if you're a center referee, there's nothing you like to see better or like to see more of than the players yammering mm -hmm. at your at your cohorts there. Um, they have very little tolerance for that, as well they should. I might have been guilty of that in my playing days. <laughs> Me too. 
at least you, you uh, although I never, granted I never saw you play, but given your knowledge of the game, at least you had talent. I didn't have talent, I just had a mouth. I just mouthed off. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that to referees no more. <laughs> that is true. So Chirka. Getting past Romero landing at the feet of Armando Mendoza, the goalkeeper for Eastmont. 27 minutes, 40 seconds. How do you think Moses Lake has responded to this early deficit? Well, I would, I would actually say it's Eastmont who have actually done better. I think the first 20 minutes were scrappy, but as soon as Eastmont got the goal, I think now they've settled into the game and we haven't seen that reaction um, from Moses Lake as what we might have expected to. Um, you know, I think what they need to do is keep the ball a little bit more when they win it, can they keep possession a little bit better and kind of build a bit of pressure themselves? But Eastman are just doing a good job of keeping it. And, uh, you know, if this continues, we'll create more chances. Leon, nice through ball that time. A bit of a, a rush now. Mr. Vaquero, Mr. Maldonado chasing after it. The shot across. Oh, my goodness. That is <laughs> bounces off the chest of the goalkeeper and goes to the <laughs> corner kick. A series of unfortunate events pla plaguing Moses Lake here in the early going, coach. Yeah, I thought that was going to be another <laughs> unfortunate own goal. And th those ones are tricky, let me tell you. You know, the ones that just kind of bounce in front of you, and goalkeepers will tell you this, it's the worst ones to kind of save. But fortunately oh. for him, it didn't go in the goal. There's a shot. Can a, can a goalkeeper do an own goal? Is it an own goal when it's the goalkeeper? What do you think? Yeah, I think if it, come, if it comes off him. Uh, well, it depends if it kind of deflected off yeah. last two. Yeah, because back in the day, well, I remember I was, I was a kid in the World Cup of 86. I think it was Michel Platini. Remember him? Platini? Oh, yeah. He was the president of uh, FIFA, oh, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. UFI, yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And he, he, uh, he was in a penalty kick shootout against Brazil. And the ball, ball bounced off the back of Carlos Gallo, the goalkeeper for Brazil, and it went in. So it's mm -hmm. like, okay, was it a goal? Was mm -hmm. it not a goal? The referee said it was. Mm. Is Michel Platini still around? I think he's long retired now, isn't he? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, uh, I, he got into some trouble there. Yeah, he did. <laughs> we shall not elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> 29 minutes, 40 seconds into this first half of play. So Chirka, the stop with no major problem by Armando Mendoza. Yeah, that's probably where Moses Lake have to keep the ball a little bit better. That's kind of, you know, just giving away too cheaply there. Um, they just probably have to get foot in it, two or three passes, build some pressure, um, create some chances. Yeah, they were basically repeating the same recipe they did against yeah. Bonacci. Just uh, yeah. go a quarter, a third of the field in. Mm -hmm and chip it uh, towards the yep. box, hope for the best. Play very direct and, yep. you know, in some situations it will work and cause the opposition problems. But doesn't, it, in a way, it, do, it does make you kind of one-dimensional in a way, right? Yeah, well, it makes it very predictable. Yeah. If, yeah. if the quality of the pass isn't on, then it's just obviously going to run straight to the goalkeeper. So the quality has to improve yeah. here a little bit. Free kick for Moses Lake. The touch, oh, sails a little long for the outstretched leg of that player. It looked like uh, from up yeah. here, it looked like Oscar Garcia. We're gonna double check on that. But a good opportunity going wasting for the Chiefs as we approach the 31st minute of play, coach. Yeah, and I know it was slightly offside there, but that's the quality I was talking about. Much better ball into the box there. Two or three runners um, didn't quite connect, but that's better for Moses. Like that's what they have to do. They have to get the balls into those areas, cause some issues for Eastmont. Uh, Quick run in the making, the shot from a distance. Oh my goodness, that one sails. Mm. That one had poison on the dart. Great shot there from what, 40 yards out? Yeah. I thought it was going to be dipping in uh, inside the, the underside of yeah. the bar there. But again, we just talked about it, didn't we? You know, they're, they're taking a very direct approach. I think that's probably the fifth or sixth shot from outside the box. And so you can tell what their game plan is um, from Moses Lake. 31 37 on the clock this moment of the game brought to you by dick's heating and air conditioning providing heating and air conditioning service installation and repair since 1982 serving residential and commercial they specialize in indoor air quality i, I need to pay them a visit man i'm <laughs> telling you because pretty soon it's going to be june my air conditioning is going to go on the fridge and i'm going to go man i should have listened to myself it's not a thing in england air conditioning <laughs> <laughs> 
A uh, quick touch up field, not a major trouble for the back line of Eastmont. And now that you brought the, the mother country to, to the conversation, how do you think uh, things are going to go in Qatar? For <laughs> well, the day after Thanksgiving, England play U.S., so uh, I think it's going to be a great game. I think the day after Thanksgiving, a lot of people are going to be watching the game. And um, I won't say too much more, but I... <laughs> Quietly confident about an England win, but who knows? World Cup special event, and yeah. I'm just glad that the uh, United States have drawn England, so it should be a great game. It, it will definitely, it should definitely be, of course. My boys from Chile, of course, didn't make it, so. You'll have to spot England now, huh? <laughs> 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 Matt might have something to say about uh, that uh, <laughs> when he returns. Uh, yeah, let's see. Um, uh, well, I, 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 I got. I got this friend from, from uh, Three Rivers Academy here in town who lived in Tunisia for a number of years. So I'm going to be rooting for, okay. for, for those boys. And, okay. of course, uh, s sorry, the, the U.S. of A. Uh, no offense, of course. Uh, well, they've uh, got a good chance. I think better yeah. than ever. I think they've got a good young team. So I yeah. think they're going to do better than previous tournaments. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Even though the last one, they weren't there. So <laughs> <laughs> It's good that they made it, though. It's yeah. good that they made it and that, that there was it was no cheap. There was no yeah. doubt that they, they qualified. There's a... There's a handball call, I believe. Mm. Uh, yeah, good ball in, and I think there's a dangerous position. Yeah, here. You absolutely. Know, you you absolutely. have uh, this boy, Edgar Leon, who's going to probably stand yeah. over the ball, and this kid is absolutely dangerous. Anywhere and around this 18-yard box, you, you put him on the ball, and sometimes it's only going to go one direction, and that's the back of the net. The boy is absolutely quality from these areas. We're going to have a substitution, it looks like. I saw the the assistant referee lift the, lift the flag up. But apparently they're going to wait a little bit. We'll see what's going on here. Referee counting the steps on the wall. And now he's... No, he's just going to have the the free kick take place. It's Edgar Leon. Right-footed shot. Leon, the shot. Oh! Sails a little wide. But you were right. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, I mean, it's a difficult angle, too. Oh. You know, especially, uh, you know, just outside the right-hand side of the 18-yard box. You can see what he's trying to do. He, he's trying to kind of bend it around the wall, get some curve. And it was probably got underneath it a little bit too much. That kind of... Made it go in the air, but uh, you know, a very difficult angle there to get to get the ball on target. Yeah. And just to put a bow on this topic, I will also be uh, paying attention to how Ecuador does and how uh, Mexico does. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, a good buddy of mine's from Ecuador, so he was telling me all about it. So. Oh, they must be thrilled. Yes. Thrilled Absolutely. over there because I think it's their second time in history mm -hmm. that they made a World Cup. Good yeah. for them. Yeah. A quick touch to the right side. Villa. Leon. On the mark is Garcia. Nice touch. Across the center alley for Pefferman. He's been busy today. Osvaldo Sanchez. 35-22. The heel touch doesn't quite prosper. Sochirka. Trying to keep it alive. So Chirka again, a bit too vehemently for my taste, but the referee says nothing. And there was a substitution, number 16, Allred is in for Moses Lake. See, I told you I wasn't crazy. <laughs> you got Who? a good eye. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is in the group with uh, the US and England? Iran. Okay. And there's still a European playoff to be decided. Oh, that's right, that's right. So it's going to be... Into the box is Malcolm. He's being held by the jersey, and the referee saw that. It should be a free kick, and it's going to be a yellow card. It looks like for number hmm. 14, Osvaldo Santana, for pulling the jersey off Malcolm. This is a better area. You look at this, you, this, you see Edgar's, uh, Edgar Leon's eyes light up here. He's better angle than what it was a few minutes ago. Let's see what he can do here. You know, he's got a couple of options. If I was Moses Lake, I'd probably put a few more in the wall. <laughs> yeah. Then three yeah. or they go into the ones going in. And honestly, you can probably put it... A fifth one, yeah. Yeah. You know the, you know he's going to shoot from here, so at least put another man in the wall. But uh, let's see what happens. Leon, the shot. Leon! And it bounces off the wall and into the back of the net. Yeah. The series of unfortunate events continues to beguile and bedevil the Moses Lake Chiefs.
Well, just as as soon as the referee blew his whistle for that foul, I knew this was going to go one way, and that was the back of the net. You know, Edgar Leon doesn't surprise me in these areas. He's just such a great technician. I mean, you know, I would have to kind of question the goalkeeper's stand position. He was definitely over towards the the right hand side there a little bit too much, and all Edgar had to do was just kind of place it. Lucky, well, maybe a lucky deflection, but you know, the the technique technique of this boy is, is special, and what a what a great goal. How old uh, was he the first time you coached, coached him? I think Edgo was a young little lad. He was probably about nine, nine or ten. And all I saw was this little smile on his face and one of the most gifted young players I've ever seen. And I've had the pleasure uh, to kind of coach him throughout the years. And it's just great to kind of see see him develop and, and, and dictate games and score great goals like that. Now, do you mind if I... If I If I delve a little deep on this, a Absolutely. little deeper on this, a few uh, days ago, actually, more like a week and change, we had Eastmont against Wenatchee. Mm -hmm. How many of those players have been yeah. calling you coach? Yeah, well, seven, let's put it this way, 17 out of the 20 varsity players from Wenatchee, of, uh, Wenatchee FC youth players, and I've coached every single one of them. So it was great for me to kind of sit in the stands and to watch both teams play and, and watch them, you know, play and, and not coach them for a while. So that, that was nice. The through ball that time for... Malcolm a bit too long and with more urgency than the style, Mr. Santana sends it out of bounds. We're almost at the edge of halftime there. The clock has stopped, so the time is being kept on the field by the officials with uh, Moses Lake trailing Eastmont, or rather Eastmont leading Moses Lake, if you prefer, two goals to nil. There's an old axiom in soccer that says that two nil is the least faithful, <laughs> most deceitful, duplicitous, deceiving <laughs> Uh, score there is, especially uh, at halftime. You do wouldn't you, think you, it, yeah, you wouldn't think it, but it's so true because, I mean, if you talk about mentality, I mean, Eastman probably going into halftime, think job's done, you know, get a bit confident. What Moses Lake going to say at halftime, you've got nothing to lose, come out. And once you get the first goal, if they get it, then confidence is with them. And It's a switch, huge momentum switch. It is. Maldonado. Maldonado shot across. And right before Mr. Malkin can tap it in, Revuelta Sanchez. You know, and the next goal, the, to your point, is going to be crucial. Obviously, Eastmont get the third goal, it's game over, right? You know, and no no chance back from Moses. But if they, you know, keep it 2-0 and build a bit of pressure, get that get a goal some way in the second half, then they're going to put pressure on Eastmont. A quick run down uh, the center alley, shading to the right for Morales. Morales, Pefferman prevailing that time. The push-up field looking for Malcolm. First time, however, is Allred. Allred kicked away now by the center back. Trying to get his uh, Jackson Mose. Garcia and Ganga. Oh, a bit, a bit of trouble. Oh, and he nice, mm -hmm. nice recovery by Nganga there. Jackson Mose. Sochirka. Taken back by Sitio. Edgar Leon, Leon, on the mark is Miguel Mendoza, taken back ultimately by Oscar Garcia, and there's the whistle that tells us that this first half is over with Eastmont leading the Moses Lake Chiefs two goals to nil. Don't go away. When your heating or cooling system is giving you trouble, call the Diagnostic Doctor from Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning. Here's the culprit right here. All joking aside, when you call Dick's, you're calling 35 years of experience at customer service right here in the Wenatchee Valley. Dix strongly believes in repairing before replacing and they service all major brands of HVAC units. When the people you serve are your friends and family, you see the world a bit differently. You understand that your survival depends on the health and strength of your relationships. Your word is your reputation, and that doing the right thing is the only way of life that matters. At Confluence Health, we remain humble. Trust is a gift that is earned, a privilege, an honor. And we remain grateful for the trust you place in our hands.
news, weather, and sports. It's all here weekdays at 5, 6, and 10 on your local news source, the NCW Life Channel. Hi folks, Grant Olson with the NCW Life Channel. Join us Monday through Thursday during Apple Blossom Festival as we broadcast our news live at Memorial Park. And on Thursday, an extended NCW Life News Plus from 5.30 to 6, presented by Alignment Pros and Express Loop. It's right here on your official Apple Blossom station, the NCW Life Channel. Thank you very much, Eric. And finally, a Poroski. Let's get a good look at this before I bite into it. Now this is quite warm. Welcome back to Eastmont High School in East Wenatchee, Washington, where we've just seen Eastmont take advantage of a couple of miscues and take a 2-0 lead over Moses Lake. The first one, an own goal of, of Jackson Taylor Mose, and then in the 37th minute, a free kick by Edgar Leon that if it hadn't bounced on the wall, it was probably going in. Let's face it. The, the kid, like you said, is very talented. Uh, but it did bounce off the wall. That kept, that put the goalkeeper out of position or an, an awkward position. And the ball sailed into the back of the net, giving Eastmont a 2 nothing lead. Your impression of what needs to happen for Eastmont to solidify this lead and for Moses Lake to get back into this one? Yeah, I think on the balance of play, you, you would say that Eastmont, the, you know, they deserve to be 2-0 ahead. I think, you know, they've controlled possession. I think that they've moved the ball well. I would say, in, you know, inside the first 20 minutes, I thought the game was a bit scrappy. I thought that Eastmont um, weren't connecting as well as they could have. There was a few miss um, connections on their passes, first touch, etc. But when they got the first goal, um, I think it just settled their nerves. And, you know, kind of like what we said before, before the game started, isn't you know, get the first goal. Crucial. You know, it's going to be crucial to the ebb and flow of the game, and that's and that's what happened. And then from that, you know, you started to see the quality of Eastmont. You know, there was some great combinations there, especially in the middle of the park. And you can definitely see that they are attacking their left hand side. Moses Lake is Mo Mo Moses Lake right hand side. You know, there's been time and time again where they've got in behind, and that's you know where you know the goal started from, the first goal. Yep. Um, and then obviously the second goal is a free kick, and, a, and again it was a wonderful finish. You know, if, um, you know if there was a, a negative for Eastmont, you you would probably say they they probably should be further ahead. You know, you probably say that it should be three or four with the chances that they have with the quality they have up front. Um, and that what that does it kind of gives Moses Lake a little bit of confidence. You know, going into maybe the second half. You know they're still in it, like you said, 2-0. It's a you know, it's a tough score line. It, you know if you're the coach right now, you're probably saying, look, go for it. You know they have to probably be better in possession a little bit, especially in the final third. But if they get that first goal after half time, then it puts the pressure back on back on Eastman. If I was you know Coach Atado right now, I would say, look, you know get focused again. It's a 0-0. Zero, zero. Um, don't get complacent out there because that's what can happen. Get the next goal yourself, and then you, you're controlling the game from there on in. All right, we'll see what happens in the upcoming 40 minutes of soccer. It's Eastmont 2, Moses Lake, nothing. Don't go away. Hi, folks. Welcome to Save Mart. How can we help you today? Uh, we're looking for a recliner. Okay, right this way. Go ahead and move this chair on the other side. Great, I want that one. I would like that one. That's a great choice. And I want this one as well. Okay. And I definitely want this one. Ooh. You find it at Save Mart. Full service at a low, low price. The new Hummer EV is everything you want in an all electric vehicle. It's powerful, reliable, comfortable, and will take you anywhere you want to go, on road or off. Why buy one of those lesser EVs when you can have one that uses them for traction? Order your Hummer pickup or SUV today from Sangster Motors, batteries included. Welcome back to Eastmont High School where we just witnessed 
the Wildcats take a 2-0 lead over the Moses Lake Chiefs. Courtesy of an own goal. And then later on, a nimble free kick by Mr. Edgar Leon in the 37th minute. Just a quick reminder, folks. Uh, the second half, the rematch, if, if you will, of the Wenatchee Eastmont game comes your way on the 26th of April, Tuesday, 26th. 7th p.m. right here on NCW Live Channel and right here at Eastmont High School, 7 p.m. Matt Wisen will have the analysis and I will be on the call. And then on the 30th of April, and this one just, this is just tickles me, tickles me to death. It's 11 a.m. The Keys Fiber Youth Parade, Saturday, April the 30th with Eric Granstrom and Julie Agents Kuntz. And why does it tickle me so much? Because it means things are getting back to normal. We yep. get a Keys Fiber Youth Parade yet again to kick off, or to help celebrate, I should say, the Apple Blossom festivities. So, whew, normalcy, where have you been? Good to see you again. And good to see these folks take their positions on the field. Moses Lake in white, going from right to left, uh, and Eastmont in red going from left to right on your screen Moses Lake will start the action in a second uh, referee checking with his comrades there his cohorts checking his watch there's the whistle we are in business in this second half and for a split second I had to wonder why I couldn't see a thing it's because I didn't have my glasses on hello middle age a quick touch upfield Sochirka sweeping the ball away from uh, Cristian Maldonado. Ball goes out of bounds. It will be Eastmont ball. Orlando Maldonado will uh, yield the honors to Mr. Pefferman. Let's see what the referee says. The referee says no, it will. It was actually Moses Lake's ball. So it will be the Chiefs taking care of this one. One of the great... Uh, thrills of watching Moses Lake play is uh, uh, of doing these games where Moses Lake is playing I should say is seeing Roland Gonzalez Rolando Gonzalez one of the assistant coaches uh, for um, Moses Lake and um, a, a, a very uh, uh, must be like a very important li a, a person in my professional career because he must have been like the fourth or fifth person I ever interviewed as a journalist I was 24 years mm -hmm. old a long long time ago I had a lump of spam for a brain and he was as patient and as kind as you could possibly imagine and 20 years have gone by I saw him the other day against the, in the Wenatchee game and he's still the same gentleman mm -hmm. he always was so it's always a thrill to see coach Gonzalez especially involved here with the youth as it's his passion his whole life the long kick up field rejected by the back line of Moses Lake trying again for the Chiefs is Reynaldo Rodriguez Rodriguez the triangulation with Landa looking to connect with one of those forwards taken away instead by the Wildcats it doesn't last long either way it doesn't last long because here come the Wildcats there's Sitio Sitio looking for Vaquero for Cristian Maldonado back to Sitio back to Maldonado nice nimble touch bounces off the head of a defender he seems to be doing okay however Oscar Garcia on the move, rejected once again. It's a ping pong game <laughs> early on. There is Jesus Villa, Jesus Villa, the touch to and fro with Edgar Leon, the long ball down the flank, looking for Maldonado to make something happen to unspool this a series of events. There's Malcolm, can't quite get to him. First turner is Edgar Leon, Leon and Cristian Maldonado. Lots, lots of touches and not a whole lot of direction, not a whole lot, a whole lot of clarity. Maybe we have some here, top of the box, into the box it goes, cleared away partially. There's Cristian Maldonado under some pressure, left footed shot, sails wide. But what was that all about? <laughs> yeah, I think it was, uh, again, good build up play there from, from Eastmont. Initially, a good ball in, in behind there uh, from, from Egalion, but 50 50 ball, I think it was a good challenge and uh, another dink into the box. And. Uh, Christian Vicaro tried to turn on the half turn and kind of get it with his left foot. Uh, unfortunately, just kind of missed 
and the connection and, and pulled it wide a little bit. But yeah, the the intention is clear from Eastmont and inside the first five minutes here is they're going for that third goal. They want to kill the game early. Nganga will take care of this throw-in. Jackson Mose, the touch-up field. Good takeaway by Eastmont. There's Maldonado, there's Malcolm into the box with some space. The right-footed shot getting ready and it sails wide. He cannot believe it, and apparently neither can we. Yeah, I mean, if you told me how, how do Eastmont play, it's that exact play. As soon as they turn the ball over, it's the first Boom. ball into, into Vaquero, who's already on a run. A nice combination there for Tyrell. Uh, great first touch, I have to say. He set himself up, and he looks like he's trying to go near post, but in, in that area there, you know, he's probably looking or should go to the far post across the goalkeeper, make the goalkeeper work, especially from, from that area. He'll, he'll be disappointed with that effort. It at least should have gotten target in that area. So Chirka hits the deck. Referee blows his whistle. Free kick for Moses Lake. That would have killed it. I mean, again, yeah, going back to that point, it's just that's how Eastmont play, and they're very good at it. You know, they're very good. They turn the ball over. Can they hit the space in behind quickly with their fast forwards and create chances? Jonathan Cuevas on the kick. The long ball, right-footed cross by Oscar Garcia. Pefferman watches it bounce away. Trying to connect with it is Morales. Morales, the touch to the back. Miguel Mendoza, top of the box, looking for Alex Landa. Instead, it's a quick counter in the making by Eastmont. The touch by Angel Sitio Tad, too short. That ball sails away, and Mr. Jesus Villa will watch it. Missed opportunity there again. You see how Eastmont are on the break. They're running fast forward to try and play direct. Maybe a ball quicker into, into the space would have benefited them. Oscar Garcia under some pressure. Good takeaway by Leon. Osvaldo Sanchez, back to Leon. On the mark is Oscar Garcia. Maldonado, sailing past one, right for the shot, Maldonado! And it sails just a little wide. Yeah, again, you know, they've got a great relationship, I think, the front two, Tyrell and uh, Vaquero. It looks as if almost Vaquero is kind of dropping short to try and get the ball into feet, in which he did then. What Tyrell did, he actually did an unselfish run, just kind of did a diagonal run, and what that did opened up some space for Vaquero there. Um, had a shot at goal, unfortunately, kind of spooned it a little bit wide, but good pressure there from Eastmont again. This moment of the game brought to you by Global Car Care. Your vehicle is their number one priority. Diesels and European cars are their specialty. Pickup and drop-off available. Stop by their website at globalcarcare.net. Rodriguez, Enganga. Nganga off a touch by Sochirka. Now Nganga pushing it upfield for Garcia, taken back by the Wildcats. Osvaldo Sanchez across the center circle, pushing upfield. Maldonado, the give and go doesn't quite prosper. Taken back now by Oscar Garcia. Garcia in a battle there, a bit of a shove by, looks like Jesus Villa. Referee blows his whistle. Let's see what he calls this one. Just a throw in this time. Taylor Mose nimbly stolen away by Edgar Leon. Leon and Malcolm into the box. Malcolm, one more touch, one more touch, one more step. Swips away and he managed to sink it in. What an effort by both Revuelta Sanchez and Malcolm battling it out. Let's see, the referee has whistled the play. Let's see what this one. It's the referee has, there's been a collision there. As... Revuelta Sanchez and a defender went to try and keep that second shot by uh, Malcolm to, from going in. But now there's, there's a player who's injured, but now he's, he's running off and he's walking off now. He seems to be doing okay. Yeah. seems to be accusing some kind of facial mm. uh, type of d distress, uh, discomfort. It's uh, Osvaldo Santana. Uh, one of the good uh, players for Moses Lake against Wenatchee a few uh, a week yeah. and so or so ago. We'd have to say another good break there again from Eastmont. They're, they're playing very centrally now. They're obviously getting the ball forward a lot quicker. Another good combination in there. And when Tyrell's in those moments, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, he doesn't need too many more opportunities. I know he's just missed one a few minutes ago, 
but he kept a cool. I mean, you probably, you know, the first touch was good. The second touch was a little bit heavy, but he kept going and made a challenge for the ball and, and placed a nice finish under the goalkeeper there. Jesus V on the throw, and it's 3 nothing Ismon now. The referee judges that handball to be unintentional, as he should, I believe. I, we agree with him on that one. Sanchez. Bit of a triangulation there. Across midfield goes Sitio, looking to connect with one of those forwards. Taken back instead by Adrian Morales. Out to the races now is Sochirka. The long direct ball we talked about. And the stop by Mendoza. Mendoza killing a few more seconds off the clock. <laughs> Might be a bit early there to uh, do some time wasting. I know, right? <laughs> I know. He, he hasn't had much to do, though, has he? So <laughs> it's exactly what Eastman wanted, though, right? You know, first five minutes after half time, you know, can they get that third goal? And, and you'd have to say now it's just more damage limitation for Moses Lake. Santana. Past the pressure of Malcolm. Recovered by Pefferman. Leon, touch to the back, and forth, and back. Now Malcolm, Malcolm, good through ball that time, into the box, Cristian Maldonado, Vaquero, shot across, cleared away by Santana, trying to connect with Landa. Doesn't quite prosper. Leon. Romero, Romero, Leon, Malcolm, trying to uh, get past Cuevas, sails wide for uh, Cristian Maldonado, Leon into the box, with a bit of room, not too much, though. whistle on the play, let's see what the referee calls this one. Is that a PK? Is that a PK? Based on what? <laughs> Interesting call there, wasn't it? Based on what? Let's um, see what the referee... Really see uh, what happened there. Yeah, me neither. I did not see anything illicit or meriting a PK, but he's a lot closer than we are, let's face it. So a penalty kick for Eastman that could really put the game away with 50-52 on the clock. There's the whistle. The run with the shot. And that one goes to the back of the net. It is four... Nothing. Ismont. Looks like Vaquero with the fourth tally. Yes, indeed. Cristian Maldonado. Cool as you like. You know, just kind of stepped up there. Just a couple of steps. Placed it bottom right-hand corner. And, you know, the front three, you'd have to say there. Malcolm Vaquero and Egalion are just dominating the game now. I mean, the relationship them three have. I mean, you just saw it there. You know, if one checks in, like what Tyrell did there, Vaquero's going to run in behind. You know, vice versa, if Vaquero checks in. Tyrell's going to run in behind. We've just got a really good relationship going. And then Edgar just behind can, can feed them their passes. And that will, that's what led to the PK. And we've got another one play here. Too. Malcolm, run across for Maldonado. That one looked like a PK more than the first one. Let's see what the referee calls this one. Yeah, I would say that's more of a PK than a lot. Yeah, that's what I was saying. One. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Because now Maldonado is really starting to feel it. And yeah. now the referee is consulting with the assistant referee. Well, the AR, she, she had a flag up. She flagged for the PK. I mean, I think it's a stonewall penalty, if you ask me. 52-12 on the clock. And it's, a, and it's another PK. And it's yeah. another penalty kick. <laughs> All right. I wonder what the conversation was about there. That's what I love about this sport. You <laughs> never know what you're going to encounter. And this is going to be the turn. It looks like Mr. Malcolm. Malcolm. A slight hesitation. The shot. And this time to the other corner. Making it 5 nothing, Eastmont. So what you see now, modern day PKs. You know, a couple of steps. Head goes up. Trying to look to see where the goalkeeper is going to dive. And then Tyrell nicely placed it in the in the opposite side to, to where the goalkeeper was but yeah I don't know what the conversation was there before, between the referees because that was a stonewall penalty if you ask me I thought Vaquero made another good run took a touch and uh, you know in that situation there Moses like didn't need to kind of make that tackle doesn't need he's not going anywhere just stand him up delay him 
Um, see him out of bounds, but decided to lunge in, dived in, got the player. PK 5 0, Eastmont cruising. This moment of the game brought to you by Harvest Valley P Pest Control. You can rest assured Harvest Valley Pest Control uses kid and pet safe material around your home or office. Call today for your free estimate. Down the flank on the right side uh, goes Miguel Mendoza, finds himself quickly under some pressure. Ball goes out of bounds, however, it will favor the Chiefs. Taylor Mose. Sitio, ball goes out of bounds. I was wondering why I smelled oranges. <laughs> Somebody having a little snack here. All right, all right. And not only that, but not sharing. That's the bad part. That's the bad part. We've got some nuts as well if you want some we can share. With <laughs> I you. can't eat enough <laughs> during a broadcast. Can you imagine that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, folks. I've been kind of hungry over there. You know, I carry a pair of nuts with me every time I coach because <laughs> it makes me not yell too much at, at the referee or the players. It just reminds me to just keep uh, keep eating so I don't say too much. <laughs> See, I, I can't I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> If I don't say too much, <laughs> I lose the job. 54-42 on the clock. Eastman well ahead, five goals to nil. And again, a repeat of the Wenatchee game. A strong first half by Moses Lake. And then in the second half, things tend to go a little bit all right. Seems like uh, the, the other team learns their secret. Mm -hmm. uh, takes good measure of their capabilities and... Uh, they basically take control of the game. Yeah, and, it, you know, now it's just about mentality, having a bit of pride and, you know, still digging in, stop stop the scoreline getting too big because confidence is just going to is gonna go for Moses Lake. The long ball looking to connect that time. And it looks like uh, with... No, it was... Uh, I thought it was Gomez, but it's not Gomez. It's uh, Miranda. Bruno Miranda. But A action continues. Sitio, Romero, triangulation back to Sitio. Bit of a quick touch there by Leon back to Romero. Vargas looking for Miranda. First tonnet is in Ganga. A bit of a mistake there. Malcolm is going to try to get there first. Ball bounces long and wide. We'll see what the referee says. It will be a goal kick for Moses Lake. Could have gone anywhere. <laughs> Yeah, good uh, good rush by the goalkeeper. Just about did enough. Uh, like we said, Tyrell's fast. He he anticipated it there. Um, unfortunate not to kind of get to the ball first. Five nothing to score. Fifty six eighteen on the clock. Ismont jumping all over Moses Lake here in the early part of the second half after. Uh, First half that uh, was a lot more difficult than the scoreline would leave you to believe. But second half, it's been all Eastmont so far. This moment of the game brought to you by Les Schwab Tires. At Les Schwab Tires, they take your safety seriously every time you stop by. Sitio. Orlando Maldonado, Leon, Sitio, touch to the back there for Osvaldo Sanchez, upfield now, Leon and Vargas, Vargas and Leon, on the mark is Reynaldo Rodriguez, Moses Lake prevails, the quick run now by Oscar Garcia trying to keep it in bounds, well blocked and shielded by Luis Romero ball goes out of bounds. It should be Eastmont ball. This moment of the game brought to you by One Way Construction. Your project, your way. Find them online at onewayconstructionnw.com. Sitio. Maldonado. Good ball that time. He's onside. Malcolm. Malcolm. Maestro. 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 The shot across. 
And if you don't think that there's a thing as too much unselfishness in soccer, that was exhibit A, coach. Yeah, I mean, again, what they've done, turned the ball over, one ball forward into space. What I would say, you know, is the first touch of Malcolm could be maybe towards the inside a little bit, then the second touch would have put him towards goal because in that area he's one and one, but his first touch kind of let him down. His second touch took him a bit wider, and then that forced... The only ball was then the pass through and a square pass into the box. It allowed the recovering Moses leg defenders there to get in. But yeah, a bit of a missed opportunity there. Far post. Bit of a bounce there. Sanchez Revuelta having to dive for it. And then the shot sails wide. Revuelta Sanchez, I beg your pardon. Ball bounces away and it's another corner kick for Ismont. Whistle on the play. Are we going to have a substitution? No, it's a yellow card for Romero. It's a yellow card for Luis Romero of Ismont. He must have said something because he, he doesn't have any any oppo opposing players around him. So he must have said yeah. something to the referee. Yeah, we're not privy to what was said. Um, sometimes I think you I think you're allowed to have a bit of a conversation between the referee and players. You know, these are young men, and it's good to have a conversation. But again, we don't know what's been said, and yeah, unfortunate yellow card. And Coach Hurtado is uh, smiling, so it couldn't have been that terrible of a thing that he said. I think. Uh, anyway, we're just conjecturing here. The clearing by Moses Lake, thanks to Reynaldo Rodriguez. Eastman trying again, and it's stopped with no major trouble by Revuelta Sanchez. 59-39 on the clock. Pefferman, who had a very busy first half. Jackson Mose across the circle. Enganga, stopped by Romero. Wait a minute. I thought that if you had a yellow card, you had to sit out. Oh, you did sit out. Just, you got to sit out the one play, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, one play, and then, and then he's back in. Okay. Rodriguez, Pefferman, Sitio. Over to chase it is Orlando Maldonado. Ball goes out of bounds. It will be Moses Lake Ball. This moment of the game brought to you by Rivercom 911. Rivercom 911 is hiring today. See what a career as a telecommunicator can do for you and what you can do for your community. Go to rivercom911.org to apply today. The quick round down the flank. Maldonado Christian this time. Marked by Santana. The shot across. Landing Malcolm the shot and a <laughs> slapped away by the goalkeeper. Trying again is Miranda. Miranda. First on it is Jackson Mose. And just like that, we're on the other side of the field now. Let's see what happens here. A good opportunity gone wasting by Eastman, and here comes Eastman again. But uh, it looks like Malcolm was offside that time. Uh, he's talking. I hope he's talking to himself because he's really, really upset. Malcolm is. I don't know if he could do much more. To be honest, again, great play down the right hand side from from Vaquero. Good ball into the box. He swiveled on it. The ball was slightly behind him. I think he might have preferred a ball that was kind of just in front of him a little bit. But he's turned on a swivel. He's got a good shot off. And you have to say it was a decent save from from the goalkeeper. Oh yeah. Whistle on the play. Foul call. It should be Moses Lake ball, and it is free kick for the Chiefs. Coach, you were saying? Yeah, you just talk. You look defensively for Moses Lake. I mean, it's time and time again. He's smart again behind your back line, and it's. You know, as soon as you lose the ball, you know, they probably just need to drop a little bit quicker, limit the space in behind. But it's almost like as soon as they lose the ball, they're, they're stepping up even a yard, which is giving more space for the forwards to run on to. So most of the they probably just have to, you know, be a bit more compact on D. We have a couple of players getting ready to enter the contest, it looks like, for the Wildcats. One of them is look, looks like he's Octavio Garibay, number four. There's Malcolm with the ball. Pushing up field is uh, Maldonado. Maldonado and Miranda. Miranda and Malcolm. Malcolm approaching the top of the box. Into the box he goes. Shot across. Is he going to connect with somebody? Cleared away nimbly by, it looked like, Jackson Mose. And another corner kick. It's all Eastman at this uh, stretch of the game, coach. And everything's coming through the middle. I mean, you know, if I'm Moses late, I don't see any screen player in the middle of the park there. You know, it's time and time again. The, the back four of the defense is just getting an onslaught from Eastman. So they just need to get numbers back, get more numbers into the middle because it's obvious where every, every single play from Eastman's going. The other player waiting to be subbed in is number 14 for Eastman, Jose Guerrero, according to the roster. There's a the long ball. Pefferman. Maldonado. Cristian Maldonado charged from behind by Oscar Garcia. 
not to the liking of the referee, rightly so. And it will be a free kick for Isman, who are well ahead of this one. Five goals to nil over the Moses Lake High School team. Sitio. Osvaldo Sanchez back to Sitio. Sitio. Villa. Vargas. Sitio. Vargas, Romero. Moses Lake content to be keeping playing keep away at the moment. Romero. Osvaldo Sanchez back to Romero. It's an extremely high line for Moses Lake. You can't play this high of a line against the, the front two and three of Eastmont because as soon as they win the ball, they're just going in behind that space that they're leaving open. Taken back by Moses Lake. So Chirka, the shot and the stop. Not a major issue for the goalkeeper, Mr. Mendoza. Leon, clear away, recovered by Miranda, Miranda, Cristian Maldonado, the cowboy, el vaquero, Leon, nice give and go, into the box, left footed shot, couple of bounces, and it sails wide, it should be a corner kick, and it is, 64-44 on the clock, just about a quarter hour left in this Contest between Moses Lake and Eastmont with Eastmont ahead five goals to nil. This moment of the game brought to you by Sangster Motors. The American Challenge is on at Sangster Motors, home of the all new Yukon SUV. Right footed volley, whistle on the play. Something the referee did not like. It will be a free kick for Moses Lake. And. Looks like we're going to have that substitution after all. Looks like it's going to be Mr. Malcolm taking a seat. And Mr. Vaccaro too. I think Moses Lake defense are going to um, be a little thankful that them two players are leaving the field because they have absolutely ran riot out there. They've been absolutely phenomenal and really linked up well. You know, the front two, you know, Vaccaro would often drop in. Tyrell would drop in. The other would then run in, in behind. And, you know, they've got a good relationship between the two of them. And there is a quick move that time by Rodriguez into the box it goes and the stop by the goalkeeper for Eastman Mendoza. Leon. Miranda waiting for it uphill. Miranda, Leon asking Miranda to get a little closer. Instead he goes with Guerrero. Couple of bounces there. Garza. Recovered by Eastmont. Guerrero with a bit of room. The shot sails wide. Guerrero very upset with himself. 66-37 on the clock. It will be a goal kick for Moses Lake. Eastmont leading the Chiefs five goals to nil. Don't forget, folks, Friday, April 22nd, Moses Lake comes to Winnetchee to play softball in a doubleheader live on Facebook with Joel Norman on the call. Then on April 26th, Winnetchee at Eastmont Soccer with Matt Wisen and myself on the call. And then on Saturday, April 30th, 11 a.m., the Keys Fiber Youth Parade live with Eric Granstrom and Julie Agents Coons. Oh, this could be interesting. Into the box we go. It's the shot, and it sails past the goalkeeper, and Moses Lake has his first tally of the game. Number 11, Oscar Garcia, breaks the shutout, and in the 68th minute, Moses Lake makes it 5-1. to one. Yeah, a rare opportunity down there, this left-hand side. Uh, you'd have to say a mistake there. Um, you know, from the from the right back, kind of out-muscled on the ball, and then one-on-one, -on -one, You'd have to say the goalkeeper probably should be saving that. You know, it's just kind of gone underneath his legs. Probably wasn't quick enough to, to close him, and it's ricocheted into the back of the net. But 
Um, yeah, you'd have to say again, you know, totally against the run of play. Um, maybe because of the goalkeeper maybe, hasn't had a lot to do in the, in this game. He's probably caught a little bit unguarded, but um, you know that will kind of give Moses like a little bit of confidence for the remaining of the game. Miranda, Guerrero, Enganga. Trying again for Eastmont is Edgar Leon. Miranda, Leon, Leon. Trying to throw the needle a little bit. Pfefferman looked like out of the box. Oh. Pivoting header that time. Still trying to get a shot off is Leon. Leon now well covered. Oh. Tried to get a little too fancy and almost made it too. 68-41, <laughs> coach. If anyone can score from there, it's, <laughs> it's him. You know, and, and just before that, it was a good ball into the box there. And he, you know, Edgar's made a, a fantastic run. He's in between the, the, the back line and, and the goalkeeper. And he's he's got a head to the ball and it was a good save. And... Yeah, ball goes out wide then. He's tried a little cheeky chip uh, back post. Uh, I've seen him score those, trust me. You have? <laughs> wow. I've, he scored some incredible goals. Those are my favorite yeah. kinds of goals when there's like no angle whatsoever and you still put enough spin on the ball to sink it in and yeah. pass the goalkeeper and into the net. And it takes confidence to be able to do that as well. And then if you've got the confidence to be able to do that. And then, you know, the second part is the ex execution to have that at this age and to see the foresight and the vision. To be to get as close as that is just shows you how talented this kid is. The greatest goal I ever saw, 1985, Jorge Aravena, Chile against Uruguay. To this day, they call it the impossible goal. El gol imposible. If you got YouTube, check it out. You won't be disappointed. Check it out tonight. <laughs> yeah. 69:41 on the clock. This moment of the game brought to you by Save Mart. Shop smart, shop local, providing outstanding value and service since 1962. Game's changed a little bit since he's brought uh, the two forwards off. Um, Say Moses like that coming back into the game a little bit. You see now the the, the neg negative that once you bring those two off is, you know, balls go forward and they're not sticking to to Eastmont's feet anymore. To get Moses like gets a turnover and, and they're building a little bit more pressure. After the races, we go down the flank. It looks like it's uh, Orlando Maldonado cannot outrace that ball. Ball goes out of bounds. It will be Moses Lake's turn to restart the action. It's uh, dark now in the Wenatchee Valley. I hope you've enjoyed this one. 5-1 to one the score with Eastmont ahead of the Moses Lake Chiefs. And now a free kick for uh, the visiting Chiefs. The header by Romero on defense. Battling some more is Miguel Mendoza. Ball goes out of bounds. It will be Eastmont ball. If this uh, result holds, uh, Coach, where does that leave the Moses Lake record and the Eastmont record? Yeah, we're actually going to go to six and one. Uh, 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 Eastmont, you mean? For, yeah, sorry, Eastmont are going to go seven and one. My mm -hmm. apologies and. Moses Lake, they're gonna they're gonna go to three and five, um, but it puts Eastmont up at the top of the table there, doesn't it? Um, eight, one, and two overall if this uh, result stands. It's unbelievable how uh, a tough defeat like uh, the one against Winnetchi seems mm -hmm. to have galvanized the Eastmont squad. It's like, okay, we're brothers, we're here in this together, we're facing some adversity. Let's see how we respond, and they've responded admirably. Hundred percent because they played well in that game, and that's even worse when you play well and you. You know, you're leading 2-1 and, and, and you get beat. Some, and like I said before, pre-game, that can make or break a season because you're playing well, you know, you're going to be gutted after the game, you're going to really be down, but they have reacted phenomenally. It, it can be demoralizing, absolutely. It really can be because, mm -hmm. it, like I said, you, you, you're confident, you think you've played well, and against the run of play, you know, when actually kind of got you know, two, two great goals, you have to say, from, from Tyler Wisen. But for the majority of the game played well, and then they come out with a defeat, and the next three games have been, and now four, You'd have to say four wins on the bounce puts them in a great position when they do play Winachi again, which I think is going to be a phenomenal game. They're going to be at their home park, and it stands for a really good game in store. And you would have to say the momentum will be with Eastmont and a bit of fire in their bellies to try and get that, that win that they couldn't get last time. Now, you've been watching Eastmont players and Winachi players for a far longer amount of time than I have. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I got to ask you, does it make a difference uh, to talk about 
a, a road game or an away game when it's just across the river? Well, well, what it is, you know, you're at your home field with your home fans. And even if it's just across the river, mm -hmm. I'll let this play. Shot across. Right-footed swing shot. Cleared away. I have to say, I absolutely agree with you. It does count. Not to not have to get on that bus, even if it's for like a 10-minute ride. The shot, not a major problem yeah. that time. And and what it does is it's still a rivalry. Mm, yeah. And Eastmont will be confident. You know, the the, the home stadium, home fans, home and locker room, home everything. And yeah. those things play a part. Yeah. And you know, it was hostile. Or you'd say a hostile. Uh, um, audience last time at Wenatchee and you know and that, and that could play a part too and I'm sure it's going to be the same here when when Wenatchee come to town but you know these boys know each other they're they're familiar with each other they know how each other are going to play they play with each other for so many years and you know it's, it's really a game of strategy when that when that happens and I think that when they play each other again they're going to know more about each other you know in terms of strategy and I think both teams play in a different way. They both have different strengths, and it's going to really be set up for a phenomenal game. I couldn't take my eyes off it last little, uh, when they played it each other last time. It was something else, absolutely. The intensity of the game was, was really good to watch. And Jeff I expect the same, you know, next couple of weeks when they, whenever they play. Jonathan Cuevas has entered the game for Moses Lake, number 19 on his back. Bit of a battle there. The ball goes out of bounds, and Pefferman puts it back into play rather quickly for the Wildcats. It's funny because when I get them back coaching club, they always have a little bit of rivalry. You know, oh, we, we beat you back at high school. No season, kidding. So it's, it's good to see. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. And you know that that rivalry extends well into their adulthood because they're always going to remember that game, Absolutely. that goal, that shot that went away, that penalty kick that didn't go in or did go in. That You know they're always going to remember that. And it's a good rivalry oh, too. Oh, golly, yes. You know, they, they have love for each other. Uh, it, it is a, it's an intense rivalry, but yep. it's also a very clean rivalry. Absolutely. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Thank goodness for that. Yeah, you play the game tough, but fair. You know, put, put good tackling, but you play the f uh, game in a fair way. Absolutely. A quick run by Landa into the box. Well marked uh, time. Overcome by Luis Romero, who chased them. Like uh, Good defending. Cat chases a mouse. Good player, Luis yeah. Romero. Good defending. Reads the game so well. Doesn't have to really make a tackle because he reads the game. He's always there two or three steps ahead of the time because he's got a good brain and, you know, he knows what the attackers are going to do. And, and just like that example there, leaned in, used his body and, and just shielded the ball out of, out of position. One for me who goes a little bit unnoticed because he's so consistent back there at the back line. And you have you got to have those players. If you're going to be successful, you got to have those guys that, that do not get the headlines, do not yeah. get uh, a lot of recognition. But there are the guys just shoveling the coal oh, into yeah. the, the engine, the, keeping it running. Absolutely. The unsung hero. Absolutely. That I, I was one of those back in the day. You know, you just put a tackle in. You know, you, you, you're there at the right time. And it's the spine of the, of the team. And with Luis Romero back there, that last defender, he's, he's a quality player, quality defender. There's a shot. Trying to keep it in bounds. Ball goes out of bounds nonetheless, and it will be Eastmont ball. 76-36 now on the clock. This one is just about over with Eastmont well ahead of Moses Lake. Uh, game but overmatched Moses Lake squad. Five goals to one. Miranda. Garibay, touch back for Sitio. Taken back by Rodriguez. Sochirka, scooped away by Leon. Garcia. Right footed shot with more optimism than accuracy. Ball goes out of bounds. It should be Eastmond goal kick. Keep it going though. Credit to them. Credit to Moses Lake. You know, it's hard to keep playing when, you know, you're five one down, but last five minutes has been good. The defenders a little better. They're still working, they're still putting some work in, you know, and, and having a bit of pride, that's what you've got to do when you find yourself five five one behind. Absolutely. It it did make a difference to have that one tally. That uh that uh, yeah. 
kind of kept their their energy alive Absol a little bit. Absolutely, yeah. The, the the ending the game well, and that's all you would ask for as a coach. And the Moses leg side is just finish the game well, show some pride. All it takes is you know a tackle, you know a turnover, a ball forward. And, and they've shown that they can they can score a goal and they'll you know they'll take positive um, ideas from that you know into their next game. And if you think about it, if you take away the two penalty kicks, it's a mm -hmm. three-one game. Absolutely, and you know you could argue one of those is not a PK. <laughs> I'm still as, not as, sure well, as well we did. <laughs> yeah, I'm still not sure. I didn't really see anything, and you know to that point, you know sometimes the physicality of the game is is heading out of the game. The modern the modern day game is more fouls you know anything you know you touch a player sometimes and, and the free you know the referee blows a free kick and it's, it's something that i don't like to see because i think it's still part of the game but you know no arguments on the second pk we're just about done with this one referees are keeping track of the time on the field the scoreboard has stopped there's miranda miranda and leon overcome by the Moses Lake midfield, Garcia, Garcia, good through ball this time. This could be interesting. Off to the races is Alex Landa. Nobody there to keep him company, however. And the ball ends in the hands of one Armando Mendoza. Probably needs to hold on to it a bit more there. Nobody was in the box. So I'm not sure why he's kind of decided to cross it there. Maybe just take it inside, take a shot yourself. But I'll wait for your, your midfield one. Is kind of another wasted opportunity there for, for Moses Lake. Ball sails wide and out. It will be a throw in for Eastmont. Assistant referee checking her watch. It may well be the last play of the game. I don't anticipate a lot of uh, injury time. Let's uh, let's take a second, folks, to find my paperwork. And here is, it's not there. Oh, here it is. All right. We'd like to thank our NCW Live channel crew. Before, after this play, because there's Miranda. The flag is up. None of that will count, so we'll continue. Uh, on camera one, Nate Mann. On camera two, Matthew Ortiz. Camera three, Hunter Muma. Studio producer, Connor Hawk. And Malcolm Whitehall. Line producer, Eric Granstrom. And Josiah Davison. And, of course, our soccer expert, uh, Neil Oyston. Goal kick for Moses Lake. Stopped nimbly by the midfield of Eastman. There's Miranda. He's had a fairly decent uh, second half, this uh, uh, Miranda gentleman. Into the box we go now. Right footed shot over the head of the diving goalkeeper. And that was number six right there. And instead, Mr. Romero listens to the final whistle. The score. Closing this one out. Five for Eastman. One for Moses Lake. Don't go away. Hello, my name is Brian Brett, the Fire Chief for Schlein County Fire District 1, and I just wanted to talk about how amazing our Rivercom team is. They are intentional, purposeful, and skillful in everything they do, and they are the best at what they do. How they prepare, how they handle the caller, how they coordinate the emergency services, and how they push themselves to be the best. This is the kind of spirit that our Rivercom telecommunicators have. Our community needs you, we need you, we admire you, you're our lifeline. The Washington State Apple Blossom Festival is here, and NCW Life is your official TV station. Join us for the Stemelt Growers Grand Parade on Saturday, May 7th at 11 a.m. Sponsored by Harvest Valley Pest Control, JDSA Law, Mary Maids, Many Blinds and More, That Pizza Place, Together for Youth, Wenatchee Valley Dispute Resolution Center, and Walkabout Grill. Your official TV station for the 2022 Apple Blossom Festival is the NCW Life Channel. Thanks to Les Schwab Tires, I'm a confident backseat driver. Shopping cart. 
because Les Schwab helps keep us safe with brakes, steering, and more. Eyes ahead, Dad! Now what those guys back there offer with their tires? Toilet paper. But Les Schwab gives the safety by the car load. Turn here! We're kind of a big deal here. Les Schwab Tires, celebrating 70 years of doing the right thing. from the Moses Lake Chiefs by a score of five goals to one. Coach Neil, uh, Moses Lake, they worked hard. They had a good first half. Uh, they had some good opportunities. They had a goal near the end, but and ultimately the talent gap was too much to overcome, it looks like. Exactly, I think, you know, in the, inside the first 20 minutes, I thought the game was a bit scrappy. I thought neither, neither side kind of took control of the game. I think from Eastmont's point of view, you know, a few missed uh, passes inside the first 20 minutes. But once the first goal came, uh, quality goals, you know, down the left-hand side, Eastmont just settled into the game. Uh, they got the second goal, great free kick, and they just controlled the game from then on. In. And, and like you said, the quality took over. 2-0 at halftime. Um, it was an interesting approach to see what would happen in, in, the, in the second half. They got the third goal quickly and then from then it, it was just damage limitation for Moses Lake who credit to them they got back into the game they, they got a goal um, but some of the play from Eastmont the combinations through the front two Vaccaro and, and Malcolm with Edgar Leon just behind was, was kind of breathtaking at times it was some phenomenal uh, combinations through the middle and and could argue could have had you know six or seven on, on a day like today to be honest absolutely it was clear that these these uh, fellows you mentioned uh, Leon and uh, and uh, Cristian Maldonado Vaquero as they call them and uh, Ty Tyrell know each other very well. They could have played some of those plays blindfolded, it seemed like. They've got a fantastic relationship. Mm -hmm. they, they know each other so well. And, and, you know, a couple of examples, Tyrell's kind of checking in to, to get the ball. Vaccaro's running in, mm -hmm. into the space. They're doing opposite to each other. You know, Vaccaro would then check in. Malcolm would then run in behind. And it was just constant pressure. Mm -hmm. And then you've got Edgar Leon, who's just a fantastic te technician. Mm -hmm. He's going to see those those runs mm -hmm. from the front two. Quick balls forwards, great balls into the, into the spaces for those two guys to run onto. And again, like you said, they know each other so well that they don't even have to look at each other. They just one of them just has to make a run and, and they find each other. And, and like you said, it, you know, it's a joy to watch at times. You know, to watch the the three of yeah. them cause problems. And like they say, you can't build, you can't start building a building from the third floor. You have to have a strong foundation. And in the back. Some of those players have really solid games. A Pefferman, a Romero, so all those guys, they really know how to basically keep the ranch from catching on fire. Yeah, you need a strong spine. Mm -hmm. You need a strong defense, you know, to keep those goals out. And you mentioned, you know, in, in commentary, you mm -hmm. know, Kai Pefferman mm -hmm. had, a, had a busy first mm -hmm. half, you know, put a good, you know, a few challenges mm -hmm. in. You've obviously got Luis Romero, who, you know, he's just, again, he's an unsung hero, mm -hmm. reads the game phenomenally well. You know, sometimes defense, defenders, you don't have to put a massive tackle and you don't have to go to ground. And he's just a really good player who knows where to be at the right time. He sees the cues of when to drop. A couple of occasions there, he read the game so well, got his body in the way, you know, and then cleared the ball. And, and, and for this team to be successful, for any team to be successful, you need to have a solid foundation at the back. And, and it looks like Eastmont have got that with, with the players that you've mentioned. Absolutely. When we come back, we will uh, have a quick chat with the head coach of the Eastman Wildcats, Coach Vidal Hurtado, and that will be that for this broadcast. But before we go, I uh, just to say one quick thank you to all of us, uh, to all of you for watching this, this show today. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, Vidal Hurtado and a whole lot more here on the NCW Live channel. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. Uh, my name is Brian Thorpe. Uh, I own Global Car Care in Wenatchee and have been here for about 25 years. Brian started Global Car Care as Brian's automotive alternative on Arondo Street. Some customers 
We're following Brian since uh, Brian's automotive time. No, we're just grateful to be part of this community. This is where I grew up. We want to do our part to be a valuable part of this community. We want to thank you for trusting our business for 25 years. When you call Dixie Heating and Air Conditioning, you're calling on 35 plus years of experience in the Wenatchee Valley. Spending extra time in your home, you may have discovered an unwanted aroma of stinky feet, pets, who knows what. Call Dix today about installing their Train Clean Effects Electronic Air Cleaner or a Ream Halo Ultraviolet Air Purifier. Either way, the air quality in your home will be improved. Proudly servicing all of North Central Washington, call 884-6444 today. When the people you serve are your friends and family, you see the world a bit differently. You understand that your survival depends on the health and strength of your relationships. Your word is your reputation, and that doing the right thing is the only way of life that matters. At Confluence Health, we remain humble. Trust is a gift that is earned, a privilege, an honor. And we remain grateful for the trust you place in our hands. Welcome back to Eastmont High School. We were talking about unsung heroes, and we got a couple of them right here. We got Armando Mendoza, and we got uh, Luis Romero, and of course the head coach of the Wildcats, Vidal Hurtado. Armando, welcome uh, to this broadcast. And uh, first of all, congratulations on the win. Uh, I, I just wanted to ask you, to what do you attribute the confidence with which this team seems to be playing? Um, I think honestly in practice it's just how everybody is, just feels connected and we just feel like a family in general so I feel like that that'll help us in the game overall but a lot of it is just due to coaching and just all the players being well connected off and on the field so I, that's I think where we get it. Now what kind of trouble did a squad like Moses Lake with those long balls with a constant frontal if, if one dimensional attack give you today? Um, it was just a lot of the wings that we had to deal with, but I think that we countered very well because we just kept pushing them to outside and they couldn't really do anything through the middle. So we, we kind of just had that on lockdown. The only thing that really slipped through was just a mistake on our back end, but everybody, besides that, everything was good. Thank you very much. And Coach Hurtado, welcome once again. Congratulations on the victory. And uh, it seems like this team is on quite a roll going into the game against Winnedge. Well, uh, yeah, they're, they've been building well. Like we've mentioned already, you know, our trainings are, are built be, uh, behind just repetition, possession, uh, trying to build. Uh, and so I'm really not look. I'm, the, our next game is Sunnyside. That's going to be a tough game. I, again, I know that everybody cares about Wenatchee and the Wenatchee game. It's a big game for us. But ultimately, I, I, I have uh, deeper objectives than, than, than the game against Wenatchee. So our next game is Sunnyside, and that's the focus for tomorrow and Thursday. All, right. All yours. Yeah, congratulations to, to the three of you. I thought it was a good game, good team performance, um, I thought, tonight. Uh, Luis, you know, as a leader of the team, you know, you captain back there. You know, we were talking about, you know, having some unsung heroes at, at the back. Um, tell me about your goals uh, for the rest of the year. I think we talked about it pregame, about the reaction to, to loss against Wenatchee. You've got four on the bounce now. Tell me a little bit about the goals heading for the rest of the season. Um, we're just trying to play every game like it's our our only game to play and we just have to finish finish the game that we're playing that day so we can focus on to the next one after that. It must be nice having three players like Tyrell, Christian, Edgar in front of you and to, I mean they were phenomenal tonight as well kind of creating chances all of you. It must be nice as a defender to see that ahead of you yeah. from time to time. Yeah, no, it's, it's a really powerful trio up top. They're always scoring goals and they're always working together to, to um, Put the goal behind the net. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, good luck for the rest of the season. All right. And since we're talking about Aung San Heroes, I just want to touch one more thing, Coach. What would you say about the the the, the performance of the players of the bench, the, the, the Mirandas and the Garibais and all those guys? 
They did very well today. It's really important that um, every time that we ask them to step up and go in the game and, and, and uh, really just uh, not not let down with what we're trying to do. It, it always helps us. It gives us confidence that anybody that can come off the bench can perform and make a difference. So uh, that's always what we're looking for, right? To, th there's a reason why we make a sub, and so if you're coming in, it's because we think you can contribute to to what to the game, to what's happening. Just a year ago, Tyrell Malcolm was one of those subs. Uh, uh, well, he they were, you know, um, for for um, their own reasons, but no, he's he's been he's been a, a capable young man for for a very long time. So, um, but yeah, any time that anybody is asked to step up, our hope is that they do, and 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 we work at training so that they get an opportunity to do that, and if they get that opportunity, that they can make a difference. We were talking at the beginning of the broadcast with with Neil that well, the first time we saw I saw Tyrell Malcolm was coming off the bench and scoring a couple of goals. That's the kind of uh, uh, story that uh, that this young man is building with his talent, and that's the kind of story that the this team keeps building one win at a time. We're glad to have the chance to have brought this game to you on behalf of everyone involved. I'm Sebastian Moraga, that's coach Neil Oyston, saying thank you for being with us. We'll see you next time. The shot and beautiful. Thanks for watching High School Sports on your home for local high school sports, the NCW Life Channel. Today's broadcast was brought to you by Biosports Physical Therapy, Charter College, Confluence Health, Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, Global Car Care, Harvest Valley Pest Control, Les Schwab, One Way Construction, Rivercom 911, Save Mart, and Sangster Motors. Stay with us all year long for high school sports on your local TV station, the NCW Life Channel. We now return to regular programming already in progress.